So tell me a little bit about respect. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, you want to know the history of it, what the show's about? I mean, um, let's start with what the show's about, and then we'll okay. get into the history. Yeah. It's <clears throat> Respect is the story of women told through top 40 music, from codependent to independent, basically from a song like Someone to Watch Over Me to I Will Survive. So it tells the story of how women's strength, inner strength, was emerging from when the beginning of popular music was 1900 to the present. And so now, back up until the history, how did this show come to be? Well, I was a professor of management in teaching business administration, Vanderbilt University. And I had just recently moved from Prague, where I'd been a Fulbright scholar at the University of Economics in Prague. And I was trying to figure out a way to reorient myself back in the U.S. And I was in Music City and always been interested in women and management and women and leadership. So I thought, Oh, I'll take advantage of all the music here and do some research on how women are depicted in popular music. And I it was because I was asked to do a presentation at a Baha'i conference about equality of men and women, and I wanted to see if popular music would, would um, illustrate that, but it turns out popular music only goes back to 1900, so that's the furthest I could go back. And I discovered there was a, a whole narrative there of going from this codependent and then angry, you don't own me, to cynical, what's love got to do with it, to inner strength hero, greatest love of all. And nobody had seen this before. It's many times in my life I've looked at research or book and gone, ah, I wish I had thought of that. And this is the time when I did think of it. So I started out doing a lecture and I took voice lessons for five years so I, I could be not embarrassing. <laughs> And I, you know, I will never get a recording contract, but I'm, as far as management professors go, I'm a really good singer. <laughs> and uh, I started doing this, and I turned it into a one-woman show with costumes and singing, and then people said, you have to turn this into a musical. So I did, and I had to learn a lot about theater and musicals. And then it got picked up by commercial producers back in 2004, and it's been playing almost continuously since then. Before starting all this, did you have any theater background, or was the world of theater kind of all new to you? I took some theater classes when I was an undergraduate, so, and I had been in some plays in high school, but that was long behind me. I was starting from scratch. What kind of made you turn this into a stage show versus trying to take another route of maybe just making it into an album or into a movie, or what kind of attracted you to theater in doing this? Well, that's a really good question. I, I was traveling around a lot doing it as a one-woman show. At I, I got invited a lot to Australia and New Zealand and South Africa and Israel. And I was doing it in universities and companies, at women's conferences. And I, I really saw myself doing that. And then I became part of a, a theater, an arts conference that uh, was 2002 in New York City that um, members of the Baha'i community started. And one of the people who was on the theater part, the committee, works for Cameron McIntosh that does Les Mis and, you know, Miss Saigon and all those. He came up to me after my one woman show and he said, you are the best one of all these to have commercial appeal. He said, I think you should work on this, turn it into a musical. So, wow, the Cameron Macintosh guy says that I think I should do that. If he says it, you got it. And I went it. back to Nashville and I started working with some people who had a little more experience than me. And we, we uh, workshopped the piece. I found um, three women in Nashville who were enormously talented who had worked in musical theater. And we shaped a script out of that and we uh, debuted it. And then it just took off. We started getting gigs all over the place and then uh, the commercial producers picked it up. So, I mean, if a filmmaker had come up to me and said, hey, yeah, and I've got some connections for you, I probably probably would have been a movie. But it's a stage show, and yeah. it's, like you said, has been regularly produced many times over. It's been in about 75 cities, okay. uh, probably 3,500 performances. It played in Florida two years, in um, 
Chicago a year and Boston a year. It's, it's had long runs and then a lot of shorter runs in many other cities. And now we're here with Cherry Creek Theater. We're on their set mm -hmm. for it just opened uh, this weekend. Um, it runs for about a month. Yes. Um, and this production in particular is an all-female yeah. cast, all-female uh, crew. Everyone involved um, has been a woman with this. So what is it like uh, for you to hear that and to kind of get to see a show to see this show that you've seen many times, but from that point of view. I love that. Cause I, there have been several other cities that have tried to do that, but then they ended up, well, we couldn't find a female music director. Or we couldn't find a, you know, what, and it, it would it ne never succeed. So I'm really happy that here they finally were able to do it because it is about women. It's about women's empowerment, being partners with men. Yeah. And although you kind of wrote the show about a decade ago, I think even now in our political time, um, it's even more relevant than it was back I then. I think so because we're all waking up more to the realities of women. I, it's playing off Broadway now. It, we've changed the title for New York called This One's for the Girls. But about a month ago, a woman came up to me after the show and she said, this show changed my life. I said, really? She said, yes. I." never understood the choices I made with men, but after watching your show, I get it, why I've ended up where I am. And, and we have another woman who comes every week, every Saturday, she buys a ticket. She said, this is my therapy. So we're more open to uh, what's happened and how all these songs socialized all of us, male and female. Did you think when you first wrote the show that it would become this, that it'd become therapy for some people? I, I really, initially thought it was going to be this one presentation at this Baha'i conference in Florida. And then what happened is um, after the presentation, people went to the organizers of the conference because they said, oh my God, this is fabulous. I want my wife, my husband, my daughter, my son to come and see this. But there was only one presentation. So the only time they had available was after the conference was over, they booked a room. It was people were hanging from the rafters. That's when I knew that it had, there was something there. And then I started getting invited all over. And the thing that I've been really conscious, when I was in management, I did about 2,000 presentations in my career. And I was always, in fact, Maxine and I did a lot of presentations together, Maxine Rossman. We were, Maxine and I both were always conscious of the audience, what when they were engaged and not. And this is something I've always kept so into theater. If people are excited, you know there's something there that you can go with. If everybody's falling asleep, maybe you should try another idea. Yeah. And so I knew there was something there, but I never imagined this in theater. In the beginning, I thought, I'm just gonna be giving these presentations at women's conferences and in Women's History Month and corporations. It wasn't until I did that conference in New York that the Cameron McIntosh guy came up to me that opened my vistas and then since then, I've learned a lot about theater. Writing this, what is, or how would you say your background of management impacted the writing process? Most playwrights, you know, grew up in the theater and are very entrenched in that, but you had a different background. So how do you feel like that impacted the show? It did impact it. And I'll tell you that um, there have been many times when I thought, oh, I should have been in theater from young age because I entered it much older and playwriting is a young person's career you know you when you're 29 you're old um, but then I started to see that the years of research and the years of having to write a syllabus and you have to decide in August what you're going to teach November 3rd in class and uh, having to do um, annual reports of myself. There's a lot of left brain thinking to be a faculty member and to do all these workshops that I did over the years that really helped me to uh, have more discipline in my writing, but also to think more deeply about organizational issues and how people are that sometimes if, you, if I'd only been in theater my whole career, I wouldn't see things that way. So now I've gone from beating myself up to being grateful that I've been, been able to go through those different parts of careers. I loved that other career. I loved it. I had a great time and it was fun. But now that I get to uh, touch people's hearts through, uh, through the arts and through theater, it's, 
it's like nothing else to go. I have two shows running off Broadway, and I go, one of them is called Sisters. It's about African-American women, top 40 music. But people go, are shouting and screaming, laughing, crying, and, and same with the, with, um, the other show. And to, I stand there sometimes, I go, I wrote this. How is that possible? I feel so blessed and so fortunate to have these opportunities. And now I can't let you go without asking, do you have a favorite song in the show? Or can you pick a couple I, that... I, I really love them all. I even love the very codependent songs. Um, Someone to Watch Over Me, I, I, I'm Sorry, um, and I Will Follow Him. But I also love I Will Survive. Every time I hear I Will Survive, I want to get up and dance. And So it's, that's a hard question for me to answer. I can relate to all of them. And my last question for you is, why should people come see Respect, A Musical Journey of Women? They should come see Respect, A Musical Journey of Women, if they're a woman, to understand themselves. And, or, and if they're younger, to understand their mothers and their grandmothers and themselves, because I think all women are, have these struggles. And if they're a man, to really understand what women have gone through and how to be a better partner with women. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thank you, Avery. Yeah, of course. Wonderful.